good day. We're picking up back from Soul Winning Lessons or the Public Ministry, whichever title you want to give it. And we don't do reviews because we do have it on YouTube, SoundCloud, uh, Facebook, Twitter, that you can get the other uh, lessons, which we are on number 12 right now. So n number 11, lesson 11 last week, we, we started the gospel. Part one, as you turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, that the first part of the gospel is that Jesus Christ died. Plain and simple. 100% man, 100% God, and yet he gave his life. He died upon that cross. Not a stake, not passed out, but died. 1 Corinthians 15, 3, For I deliver unto you, first of all, that which I also received. This is what Paul received for salvation. How that Christ died for our sins. He didn't die as a malefactor because they couldn't find no fault in him. He didn't die in a, a public uprising. He didn't die because of a riot team. He didn't die because the people hate him. He gave his life because we are sinners. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. According to the scriptures, and we look. In verse 4, and that he was buried. Part 2 of three parts. What do you do with a, with someone who has died? And pretty much got three. You bury them in the ground or in a tomb. That's what they've done with Jesus. You can cremate the body and there are many aspects with that with false religions and but there are places where a dead body they do put it upon a fire to burn it another is you know you just leave it out in the ground which is not viable but jesus christ died and he was buried so two parts of the gospel death and being buried God. I'm not talking about just a man. We're talking about God and the Son of Man. Death and buried. Now, I'm going to be 50 years old in, in September. And in coming 50 years, Lord willing, I have seen a lot of people in my family die. One part of my family, I, I, I realized, came from my realization that I have no more aunt and uncles. Very few cousins left. And if I were to go to the grave, they're not coming up outside the rapture. Many, most of them, I don't believe are saved. I've had a wife die. If I go to her grave, outside the rapture, she's not coming up. I'm going to die. Hopefully I would be buried. Death becomes all of us. Popes. Pastors. Pastorettes. You know, female pastors. Evangelists. Missionaries. They die. And the most part, they're going to be buried. That happens to everyone that... that is born we are born to die at the moment that we are conceived in our mother's womb at some point whether it be minutes or years or even centuries death will come and we talk about the wages of sin is death he said well why are you staying on this subject so long because Jesus Christ died and he was buried but the Bible says he died according to the scriptures and verse 4 that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures 
absolutely no religious figure as high as the hierarchy of their church or the position they have in the church, whatever title or position they may have, they will die, most likely will be buried, again, outside the fact that cremation on their body just, you know, being out, left out on the ground somewhere. Maybe a water burial, let's see, I, I mean, but there is no scripture account of the death of Stanley Hayward. Nowhere between the pages of Genesis and Revelation can I say, at this place, at this time, of this which, of this how, of this what, I'm going to die. I can't say that. No one can say that about me or about themselves or anybody. You may not go to a tent of a fortune teller and say, give me all the details of my death. That's impossible. And according to the scriptures, Jesus Christ died. The Jesus Christ, they told us where he would die. They told us when he would die. He'd die upon a cross. He would die a death that would not break his bones. He would die at the time the Passover would be offered. He would die outside the city gates. He would be despised and rejected the man. There would be one of his men that would sell him out for pieces of silver. All according to scripture. I can't do that. There's only one scripture thing that I or you can do as far as death. The wages of sin is death. That's it. When? Who knows? How? I don't know. Do you realize Jesus Christ was born conceived in that womb of Mary by the Holy Spirit of God and from that time he knew exactly when where why and how the brutality of his death and he still went to Calvary because he did it according to scripture now me and death I'm sorry I'm putting this 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 lesson more on myself a, a illustration you would freak and anger and scare me if you say I would die a violent, a violent death. I don't. I don't like pain and I don't like suffering. I would like to lay on my bed or sit down in my chair, close my eyes, and open them to Jesus. Who would it? And yet Jesus knew he'd be bruised. Jesus knew that his back would be ripped open like the farmer's field of a plow. According to scriptures, and not only that, they would bury him and he... He would arise three days and three nights according to scriptures. And you get that out of the one of the places that is most unbelieved book of the Bible is the book of Jonah. As Jonah was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so as the Son of Man should be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. So we have the gospel laid out. And when we're dealing with a lost man as we are right now and he's believing the light that we are showing him and we are going far more detailed than we would do with a lost man but i think it'd be for our understanding of what we're talking about in case questions should arise now the resurrection is life from the dead That has not happened since the book of Acts. You say, well, in the hospital room, you didn't really die. Well, there's the doctors. Doctors are not God. There were people in the book of Acts. There were people in Jesus' ministry. They were dead for more than 24 hours. Don't tell me. Oh, five minutes I was dead and, and then, you know, no, you weren't. That's the telephone. We're getting a lot of them phone calls. I apologize for that. Um, you might even get a message. It's amazing how the devil does work when you're trying to do something using a telephone system. I apologize for that. So, more detail for the student of the Bible who is saved. As we look at what will happen, 
And as we're dealing with lost people, let's take the, the gospel accounts of Matthew chapter 28. And it's so easy for the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ when it comes to the, the gospels. They're in the last few chapters. So we're going to look at the Gospels today, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Lord willing, in the time that we have. In Matthew 28, verse 5, And the angel answered and said unto the women, Oh, verse 1, In the end of the Sabbath, and began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher where Jesus died. And behold, there was a great earthquake. For the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. The angel of the Lord rolled that stone away. The Bible rock and roll by an angel. Moved that wrong. Because he knew those women were coming and those women, one of the places, hey, who's going to roll that stone away? The angel of the Lord. You see, they're bringing spices because they could not finish the ritual for the burial of a body because the Sabbath had drawn. And there was to be no work during the Sabbath, so they would prepare during the, this time. And when the Sabbath was over, they would come and finish the preparation of a dead body. Problem. When they come to the sepulcher looking for a dead body, his countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake, became as dead men. Now they put men and soldiers at that tomb to guard that tomb, to make sure his disciples would not come and steal the body and say, oh, he, you know, look, he rose from the grave. The Bible records that that body was not stolen because he, they would have to pass through Roman soldiers and Jewish soldiers. And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified, the death. Part one of the gospel. They are at a graveyard. Part two of the gospel, buried. So there's the first two parts of the gospel there. He is not here, for he is risen. The third part of the gospel right there. The first time ever to be recorded about the resurrection of Jesus Christ is the angel of the Lord talking to the women says, he's not here. He is risen. That is the greatest headline. That is the greatest news that is ever to be of mankind that Jesus Christ is God. And God is Jesus Christ because no man has been ever put into the ground. No man has ever been buried outside of the future of the rapture has ever come out of that grave three days and three nights. Martha says about her brother, he's been in there for four days, he stinketh, Lord. And yet, Jesus Christ, three days and three nights. And the angel says, he's not here, he's risen. Come, see the place where the Lord lay. And go quickly and tell his disciples. So there is the gospel there. He was crucified, this is where he laid, and now he's risen. Mark 6, theme, excuse me, Mark chapter 16, in verse 1. There were at least three women there. Four other places, I see. You know what the law said? Out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, it shall be established. Three, let's say three human women, six eyeballs, and an angel from heaven, the angel of the Lord, which you know, which in the Old Testament is Jesus Christ. That angel of God, that angel of the Lord is Jesus Christ proclaiming to the women, hey, I'm not in there. Isn't that interesting? And when the Sabbath was passed, verse 1, Mary Magdalene 1, and Mary, the mother of two, James, two, and Salome, three, had brought 
sweet spices that they might come and anoint him, the dead body, finish the burial ritual. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, Sabbath is over. The seventh day is over. They came unto the sepulcher at the rising of the sun. You know what the first day of the week was? Back here, keep your place there, but I'm going to go through Genesis 1. You can go. Genesis 1, verse 3. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And verse 5. The evening and the morning were the first day. The first day of the week was the light. The first day of the week, here, is the light. They came to the sepulchre at the rising of the sun. The sun didn't come and the moon and the stars to day three or four. Light, earth, moon. Uh, I'm not, not going to go, but the, uh, the sun came afterwards. Now, I forget which day it was. And they that said among themselves, Who shall roll us away the stone from the door of the sepulchre? Matthew chapter 28 told us who did it. The angel of the Lord. See, he knew those women couldn't do it. For two reasons. One, that stone was too heavy. Two, there were Roman soldiers there and there were Jewish soldiers there. And they're like, and I always wondered that the fact is, here they're going to come to the body, there's a stone, would those soldiers, <coughs> excuse me, would those soldiers open that tomb for them? Probably not. And when they looked, they saw the stone was rolled away, for it was very great, the stone. And entering into the sepulchre, that's where you put dead people, buried They saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a long white garment, and they were frightened. They go in that tomb, and here's this man sitting there. He's young. And he says unto him, Be not affrighted. Sounds like the angel of Matthew 28, a young man. But 28 says he was sitting on that rock. They go inside, there's another angel. Or maybe he goes in there. Right? Now watch. Ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified, death. They're in a tomb where the body of Jesus Christ was. Burial. He is risen, resurrection. Death burial, resurrection. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. See, that's where he was. That is where his dead body was. Crucified. He wasn't. Some people say, oh, you know, he passed out, and then when he laid on that cold stone, oh, he, arrived, he revived himself. That's a lie. He died. That's the scripture. If your Jesus did not die, and that is your faith and trust in the Savior that did not die. You are not saved and you will go to hell. Because the gospel says he died. The lamb on the Passover night had to die to shed that blood. The Passover lamb. Behold the lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. Luke 24. Luke 24. Isn't the Bible great when you study 24-1. 24-1. Now upon the first day of the week, got that settled. Very early in the morning, got that settled. There came unto the sepulchre, bringing the spices, got that settled, which they had prepared, and certain others with them. So there is a group of women here. Where two or three are gathered, where two or three are witnesses, the Bible says it shall be established. If two people said you did it and saw it, it's the law. If three people saw what you did and testify in a courtroom, 
it is the law. Multiple people There's your witness. The law says, okay, you see a man in a bank, he's got a gun, he's running out with a bag full of money, and only you saw him. You can't really prosecute him with one witness. But the bank teller, the person standing with the bank teller, the person in line, the person walking in the bank, the person who is sitting down, checking and counting their money, the person at the desk filling out the receipt, seeing you do it, you can walk in a courtroom and say, yep, that's the one. And he'd be guilty. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher. There we go. They are expecting to come to a dead body with a stone upon the, the mouth of the tomb, have no idea how they're going to roll that stone away. The first thing they come to, they find the stone is rolled. The rock and roll. Rock and roll. It's not to be music after Satan was the music leader in heaven. But what rumps around in the back seat of a car, and I believe it's Chicago. You know rock and roll is a term of what goes on in the back seat between a man and a woman was a word that came up from America. You know what America fruits are? Mormonism, Jehovah Witnessism, Mary Baker Eddyism, the uh, uh, charismatic isms, rock and rollism. That's the fruits of America. The rock and roll that I have is that stone that kept the body of Jesus Christ inside that tomb so no grave robbers would come. And the angel of the Lord came out and man, just moved that thing out of the way. And those guards stared, oh, they're petrified. They're scared. They're at stone. Entered, went, and they found the stone rolled away from the scepter. And they entered in. They walked right in. And found not the body of the Lord Jesus. They are looking for a dead body. It's not there. Roman soldiers outside, Jewish soldiers outside, a seal on that tomb by Herod, I mean Pilate. And they walk in and there's no body. No body. And it came to pass as they were much perplexed, they're about, what's going on? Where is he? Where is the body of Jesus? Behold, two men stood by them in shiny garments. Matthew says one man, the angel of the Lord. Mark says there was another man inside. Luke says there's two men. There they are. I think there were three groups of women at that time. I don't know. Two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, the men, Why seek ye the living from the dead? We are in a graveyard. We are in a tomb. Death. We are in a sepulcher. Burial. And yet he is living resurrection. He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in gallery? Yet the Son of Man must be delivered in hands of sinful men, be crucified, death, and the third day rise again, resurrection. And Jesus even spoke about it. The death, the burial, and the resurrection. According to the scriptures, not only the Old Testament scriptures, how about the scriptures of the mouth of Jesus Christ himself? How's that? John 20. John 20. Verse 11. But Mary stood without the sepulcher. Dead are buried in the sepulcher. Dead. Weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulcher. Where death is. She looks in. And see it, two angels, oh, two men, Luke, a man in Mark, an um, angel in Matthew, John, 
two angels. Now, let's not get into a big deal. We're not talking about that right now. Angels are men. They are never women in the Bible, and they don't have wings. Two angels in white, I would assume blistering, shining, as Luke and Mark. Uh, one at the head and the other at the feet. Where the body of Jesus had lain. Burial. A dead body. In a grave. Death. Burial. By the way, those two angels right there are in the position of the Holy of Holies, of the mercy seat. There was a cherubim on the one side and a cherubim on the other side with a mercy seat in the middle. That would represent where God was on that mercy seat, Jesus Christ is on that mercy seat. Again, God is Jesus. Jesus Christ is God. If you got the, the Jesus Christ and the Jehovah Witnesses, you are not saved. Because they say Jesus is not God, and the God that is Jesus, and the Jesus that is God, is the only way, the only truth, and the only life that will get you to God the Father. Better make sure you have the right Jesus. The Jesus that is God that suffered and died, according to scriptures, and was buried, and arose again the third day, according to the scriptures. What is the scriptures that he rose? Not only did he, the Old Testament speak about it, is not it the testimony of the angel of the Lord? The young man, the two men with, with the, the white outfit, and the two angels. Is that not scripture that we have read Matthew 28, Mark 16, Luke 24, John 20? Is that not the scriptures that the angels proclaim the resurrected Jesus Christ? And woman, why weepest thou? She says unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. When she had said thus, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing. I thought he was dead. I thought he was laying in that tomb. And knew not it was Jesus. Jesus says unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? And she spoke in him to be the gardener, you mean Adam, in the Garden of Eden, the second Adam. Say to him, Sir, if thou hast borne him hence, if you've taken him somewhere, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. She wants that body. The body of Jesus is standing there with her. Jesus says unto her, Mary, she turned herself and said unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. Jesus said her, Touch me not, for I am not ascended unto my Father. But go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my Father, the resurrection, and your Father to be my God and your God. And she went off and told him. The death, burial, and resurrection according to scriptures, Matthew 28. Mark 16, Luke 24, John 20, Psalm 1610, Psalm 1610, Psalms chapter 16, verse 10. But thou will not leave my soul in hell. Neither wilt thou suffer thy holy one to see corruption. Three days and three nights. Well, Martha told us four days the body begins to stink. The body of Jesus Christ did not begin to decompose. It did not begin to break down. Rigor Morris did not set in the body of Jesus according to the scriptures. Hosea 6.2 Hosea 6.2 After two days will he revive us. In the third day he will raise us up and we shall live in his sight. It's going to be the nation of Israel. Isaiah 53.9 
Now, we're not going to read all of Isaiah 53. We should. You ought to read it. You ought to know it. Because it's about the suffering Messiah. It's about Jesus Christ. But Isaiah 53, 9. He made his grave with the wicked. The wages of sin is death. There are other bodies in that graveyard around him. He died between two thieves. And with the rich, his death. Joseph Armenia was a rich man. That was his tomb. Because he had done no violence, I find no fault in him. Neither was there any deceit in his mouth. He did not back talk violence. 26.19. Again, I leave you to study that. 26.19. Isaiah. Thy dead men shall live. Together with my dead body shall they arise. Wake and sing, ye that dwell in the dust. So there was a resurrection. And the Bible speaks about the resurrection. So the gospel in three points. Is that Jesus died for sinners. Suffered and died. He was buried. And he arose again. And that's not just it. That's not the whole story. Because anybody can die. Anybody. And yet there's one that can do it according to prophecy. There is one where it has already been fulfilled and told about his life. His birth, the place he would be born, the life that he would lead, how he would die, where he would die, when he would die, what he would die of, what would happen on that day he died, according to the scriptures. And then what would you do with a dead body? Get rid of it. And yet his body is not going to decay. His body is not going to break down. It's not going to smell. It's not going to rot. He won't give it time to do it. Now Lazarus' body, four days, his body began to stink and smell. According to the Bible, according to Martha. But not the body of Jesus Christ. And on three days and three nights. Angels. Of heaven. Proclaim. That Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. The women have proclaimed that Jesus Christ. Has risen from the dead. He was seen above 400 if not more. And the Old Testament law foretold if any over two or three witnesses, it shall be established. And I'm looking for mercy. I don't know if I'll find it. Look at this. Take your Bibles, 1 John chapter 4. So the Jesus we are taking to lost men. That they must believe that their Savior, their Lamb of God, died. He did not pass out. I'm trying to tell you what is belief out there from the lies, from the facts that Jesus died. And they buried him, a dead body. They were looking for the dead body of Jesus, not alive Jesus. That was the last thing in their thought. Those women bought spices of a dead body. And angels proclaimed, He is not here. 
he is risen. In 1 John 4, verse 2, verse 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, for they are of God, because many false prophets are going out in the world and they teach another gospel. Paul's already warned us. They teach another Jesus. Paul's already warned us. They teach another gospel. Paul's already warned us. Another spirit, another Jesus. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. Some people say Jesus is not real. Some people believe that Jesus is not God and he is a good teacher. But every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. This is the spirit of Antichrist. Whereof ye have heard that there should come, even now already, is in the world. There are spirits out there, there are churches out there, that defy and teach against what I just taught you about the gospel. There are people out there that says that everything was not created by God, it was created by accident. There are people out there that says if you believe our religious figure, person, anything but Jesus Christ. There are people out there that think if you go through Mary. There are people, if you have multiple babies and populate the outer space. That defy the gospel. And when we are witnessing the people the gospel. The witness, the story to be told is that Jesus suffered and died, according to scriptures. That's a big, that's a big, that is a huge statement to make because we all die. But we don't die according to scriptures. And he was buried. All, well not all, think of that. Most <laughs> dead people are buried. So with that, the body of Jesus, as far as being buried, that, that's like any but any human being. See, his death wasn't like any other human being because it was foretold. That, they put him in the tomb. That happens to anybody. And what doesn't happen is he arose from the grave three days and three nights according to the scriptures. Now, outside the rapture, how long the Lord will tarry? You bury a dead body in a tomb, in the ground, in a mausoleum, in a vault, wherever you bury. Outside the power of God and his resurrection, that body ain't going nowhere. How do you know that your religious figure can't get you to heaven? When he dies, is he still in that grave? Is he? Even after three days and three nights, is he still buried? Is his tomb still filled with his with his ashes, with his flesh, with his bones, with his dust? Then he ain't God. And he can't save you. Now, my God, you cannot find a piece of skin of him. You cannot find a bone of him. You can't find him. You may be able to go over there and find the tomb. Well, I don't know how many tombs they have, but you might be able to find the tomb where Jesus Christ laid, and he's not there. You want to find Jesus? Go to the right hand of the Father. You want to know how to get to the Father? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. For Jesus said, I am the way. Is the side behind me? The truth and the light. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And the one that said that died according to scriptures. The one that said that was buried. And the one that said that arose three days and three nights according to the scriptures. Now that is God.